Hi, I'm Brian Hamilton, head football coach at Foothill High School in Palisadero, California. And I want to introduce you to the play that's become the cornerstone of the shotgun zone fly offense. And that is the fly sweep and the way we run it and implement it out of the shotgun. I want to spend the next couple moments talking about how the sweep has evolved in the shotgun zone fly offense. About three years ago, before installing this particular style of offense, we ran the traditional fly sweep. And basically, it was a two-back set with a sweeper. And a receiver was our fly sweep player. And his job was to attack flat down towards the quarterback, get the ball, and be a sweep threat on every play. Whether he's getting the ball or whether he was a fake, faking the ball or faking carrying the ball. And so that the backs could run their inside run game. That worked very well for us, but as a coach, what I wanted to be able to do was spread the field more. And I wanted to incorporate the quarterback in the running game. So what we've done to this fly sweep is we have taken the quarterback, Foothill High School, and moved him back into a shotgun. We have gone to a single back set, and I'll explain that why in a minute. And we've moved our fullback out into a wing in most formations. Now let's talk about that for a minute. Why have we moved the wing out to the edge? Well, in traditional fly, move him back, in a traditional fly sweat, set, the sweeper moving down the line of scrimmage and getting the ball, the lead blocker for him on the perimeter was this back. Well, defense, has got, defense got pretty wise to that, and the outside force player would time this and actually come charging across the line of scrimmage to make contact on our side of the ball or two yards in the backfield. This causes problems with the sweep, um, it disrupts the flow, and it causes, uh, obviously, causes the sweep to turn up inside or to go really wide, and we wanted to avoid that. So in the shotgun zone fly, what we've done is we have moved the quarterback back into a shotgun set. We have moved the halfback over the guard, and we have now moved the fullback, which we call our wing, out to the edge in most formations. This has given us tremendous advantage. One is it stopped the force player from being able to disrupt that sweep, and also it has allowed the sweeper to gain depth, getting the ball at a deeper place so that he can read his blocks. In the traditional fly, he would have to get the handoff at quarterback depth, almost at the line of scrimmage, and then slide back. But by being in shotgun, we've now allowed the fly sweeper to get the ball, get the handoff at depth, allowing him to easily read his perimeter block. For us, this has changed the sweep for us. It has made it more effective. At Foothill High School, we average over 10 yards of carry on the sweep. And as importantly as that, it has really opened up our inside run game because defenses now have to commit a certain amount of defenders, whether it be the force, the corner, a safety forcing, an inside backer scraping over. They have to commit several players, defensive players, to the sweep whether he's getting the ball or not. And by keeping our quarterback in a shotgun and by keeping a halfback um, in a shotgun alignment that's in more of an eye, almost as if the, in the pistol, um, in the pistol he'd be lined up right here, but by just moving him slightly over, we're able to still have an inside run threat from two backs, quarterback and a halfback, and still make the defense um, commit to stopping the sweep. And we found this to be very effective, and this is why we run the shotgun zone fly sweep at Foothill High School. And over the next few minutes, what I want to talk about is the ways that we block it. Uh, we've been successful against even front, odd front, 3-4 um, defenses, 3-5 defenses. We've been successful against any front. So what I want to talk about in this video is one is how we implement the sweep, and two is how we block any front, and then in practice how we drill the sweep to be effective part of our offense. Before we get into talking about how we specifically block the sweep, I want to talk about the role of the sweeper what we expect from him. I want to talk about the role of the quarterback, how he executes the, the sweep handoff, um, or how he runs the sweep. And I want to talk about the halfback's responsibility in the sweep. So let's talk about the sweeper first. 
The landmark for our sweeper, depending on which side, that depends on the formation you call. If we're in the middle of the field, though, his landmark for most formations is slightly inside the numbers. He will line inside the numbers, and we have him line in what we call a rocket stance, meaning that his inside foot is up, slightly arched back, eyes looking down towards the quarterback. The quarterback will give him a signal. For us, it's in the cadence. At that time, he will accelerate in flat motion, gaining speed as he goes, until he reaches the outside leg of the offensive tackle. When he reaches the outside leg of the offensive tackle, he slides about a yard and a half to two yards up towards the quarterback. His aiming point is directly in front of the quarterback or exactly where the ball would be when the quarterback places it out to be handed off. He's going to have one or two things happen. The sweeper is either going to receive the handoff or he's going to fake. Let's talk about when he receives the handoff. As he approaches the quarterback, his arms will be just like a running back as far as how he receives. Nice wide pocket, he'll collapse on it, but a key aspect for us, whether he's getting the ball or whether he's not getting the ball, is that we want his back, okay, his back numbers to be flashed to the linebackers, meaning that when he gets to the quarterback, we want him to take his belly, his front numbers, and rotate towards the quarterback. If the quarterback was this whiteboard and I was the sweeper, rotate towards that. The reason we do this is to add deception to our handoff so that the linebackers for a brief moment do not know whether the ball's been handed off or whether the uh, ball has been faked to the sweeper. So as the sweeper rotates, he, if he's receiving the handoff, he clamps down on the ball and then hit it on his next step, he will take it and put it on his hip continuing to hide it from the defense. Once he's taken the handoff, his eyes will immediately go on the block on the force defender. And we'll talk about who that, who, who's in charge of that block in just a second. But his eyes immediately goes to the block on the force defender. If the force defender is being kicked out, then he'll run up underneath that. If the force defender is being logged or hooked, then he'll run outside of that. If the force defender ha is being blocked head up, then he's taught to set that block up by dipping inside and then accelerating outside. And real briefly, if the sweeper does not get the ball, the only thing that changes in that whole scenario that I just laid out is the fact that he doesn't have the ball. His back will be flashed to the defense, arms will go up, pocket, he'll put his hand without the ball on his hip, his eyes will go on to the lead block, and he will run the appropriate path based on that. That is the sweeper's job in the fly sweep. Quarterback. The quarterback's job is to make sure the linemen have been set a second before he sends the sweeper in motion, to get into a nice athletic stance, and to snap the ball. We want the ball in our quarterback's hand when the sweeper is on the guard. We want a step and a half between the time the quarterback touches the ball and the time he hands it to the sweeper or rotates to hand it to the back. That happens quickly on film as you'll see, but it also gives us enough time to if there is a mishandling of the snap, the quarterback has some options. If the quarterback is going to hand the ball off to the sweeper, he is going to hold it on the, what we call the track. He receives the snap, holds it on the track, and it's the sweeper's responsibility to get the ball from the quarterback. The quarterback is not to slam the ball in there. If the quarterback is faking giving the sweep, he'll hold the ball on the track, he'll rotate to the front knee, and when the ball reaches the front knee, at that time the sweeper's back would be turned to him, or belly would be turned to him, we would pull the ball to our belt, keeping our hip towards the halfback still, and rotating to hand off the inside run game. If the quarterback is keeping the ball, he will go through all of those things I just talked about, but instead of handing off to the sweeper or the halfback, he will then keep the ball and run his play, whether it be the quarterback sweep, whether it would be a quarterback trap, whether it would be a quarterback zone, or any other things that our quarterbacks run. The halfback's responsibility 
As you're going to see in another segment, our halfback does two things on sweep, depending on what type of sweep we're running. He could either lead as a lead blocker on the sweep, so if we were running sweep this way, he would be a lead blocker, and we'll talk about his responsibility in that in, in, a, in a little bit. Or, if he was not on a lead block, his job would then be to run an inside track and fake an inside run lane after the ball's been handed off to the sweeper. So that's the halfback's responsibility in the fly sweep out of the shotgun. That's what I wanted to do in this segment, was go over these three important roles in our fly sweep. Um, we talked about the mesh in an earlier DVD, and that's crucial to the success of this play. And how they execute their roles will determine in great part our success in running the fly sweep. Let's take a moment and look at how we implement the sweep, how our blocking rules, and how we block the sweep against any front. What I want to do right now is show you the easiest way or the most simple way that we run fly sweep, the basic way. I've drawn up here what, our, what we call a trips flex formation. Trips being on the left, we're going to run the fly sweep this way, get into an even front. We'll start right here with our flex tight end here. Now, he has the most crucial block. The key block on the sweep for us is the block on the force defender. When I say the force defender, I mean the defender whose job it is to contain outside run. So right here, the defender we feel would be forced would be this outside strong side backer. The key block would be this block. Our goal is to log him or reach him. But if he won't allow us to do that, if he's working an outside angle, then we will drive him to the sideline. Our linemen are taught very simple techniques, outside zone techniques. To be most simple with it, the way we teach it to our youngsters is we say, if we're running sweep to our right, and I happen to be a lineman, we're going to take our inside hand and work it to the play side shoulder of our nearest defender. So if we're working to the right, and when I have somebody outside shade of me, then I'm going to drop step, take my inside hand, and work it to his play side shoulder in a technique called dip, rip, and run. It's an outside zone technique. We will do that straight across the board. So we will work an outside reach technique here. We will work through, try to take that over to here. We do not feel like we need to block the three technique. We will run with the center a track through that in case he gets in the way, but we feel like we can run our sweep without blocking the interior two defensive linemen. And then we will scoop up to the inside backer. We will work up through a track with our center, working up to the next level. Same thing with the backside guard and the backside tackle. Real simple scoop blocking up front. Now in our basic fly sweep out of the shotgun, the halfback's job is to read this block as well and to block the first bad guy off that block. For example, if we were getting what we want, which is a log block, then the running back, the halfback, would be the lead blocker on the perimeter, and his job would be the first bad guy, which would probably be that corner. If we were getting a kickout block from this defender, so this defender is moving out, we're getting a kickout block on that defender, then the halfback would stretch, read that, and work up inside that block and look for the first bad guy. Our sweeper in this formation is lined up on the inside. He will attack in fly sweep, as I mentioned earlier, motion, gaining speed, receive the ball, and immediately his eyes will be on that block. And he will read that and cut off that flow. His lead blocker is the halfback. After the quarterback has handed the ball off on the sweep, we will often have him attack the back side. Sometimes, and you may see this on film, we'll actually even pull the backside guard on a false read to later try to set up an off-tackle quarterback run play.